Ah, Illumination. You're a funny one, Illumination. Always tackling something in a way that gets people talking, for better or for worse. And I figured this Christmas season, since the Mario movie hasn't released just yet, let's look back at the time when Illumination wanted to be festive, and got their hands on Dr. Seuss's The Grinch. Cause yes, that was a thing that happened. Remember the debates between Jim Carrey and Benedict Cumberbatch? Not really. It wasn't much of a debate. Everyone was salty saying why try to repeat the perfection that was the live action adaptation. That being said, I never actually chose to watch this movie. I just didn't care much for it. Releasing in November 2018, this film would go on to turn $75 million into five... <laughs> 512 million US dollars worldwide? That makes it the highest grossing Dr. Seuss movie ever. Oh, scratch that. The highest grossing profits for a Christmas movie of all time. That is absolutely bonkers. And was it deserved? I guess let's get into it. Obviously, from a writing standpoint, it's gonna be hard to say that this is a bad movie. After all, this is being adapted off of the backs of an iconic writer. And we certainly enjoyed other screen adaptations, but in every other format, you can see how this movie is so strongly stark to previous iterations. Because for a start, it is just so bright. And I'll tell you what, that's really quite fitting. One of the natural benefits to a film adaptation in the late 2010s is the advanced computer-generated animation, and I have to say, the visuals are absolutely stunning. It's a shame, because I could always say the same for most modern animations by Illumination or not. Assuming they're not just rehashing the same visual aesthetic every time. Seeing the town of Whoville with all of its Christmas spirit is a really captivating sight to see and makes for the whole experience to go down a lot smoother. Sure, it would make sense for the Grinch's brooding escapades to take place more in the darkness of night with a gloomy blizzard around him, but sunshine just look nicer. Or if it is nightly, the glowing of the Christmas lights can bloom more. You can certainly see from the trailer alone how these kind of visuals would draw in families and thus their kids to the cinemas in droves to profit 500 million dollars. I still can't get over that. But what also I think is so advantageous to actually tackling this story in the animation media is some of the extra pizzazz they can add to all sorts of story beats and actions of the film. The gigantic Christmas tree that comes in as the focal point of the town in the movie arrives in this crazy airship in a way that Jim Carrey could never possibly imagine. Or how's about when Donna Who is trying to get everything sorted in the movie and how she can just throw bread into the air and perfectly into the toaster. It's simple things like that that I can really appreciate with the form of animation not causing some sort of Jackie Chan level of retakes to achieve for the screen. But of course, the golden child of advantages is this version's adaptation of Max the Dog. Oh, dog trainers are weeping with inferiority. As in this version, I think Max is probably our favorite character in the whole movie, elevating not just from a dog that's around for the majority of Jim Carrey's time, but as a Gromit-esque partner to the Grinch here. It's him who handles making coffee every morning. It's him who delivers it via a tray each morning. And it's him who has a mini arc of being jealous of the giant reindeer the Grinch also adopts. Hey, wait, this is essentially the same design as Secret Life of Pets. A small dog jealous of the newly added large animal. Come on, Illumination. This is literally one of the few additions you added to the source material, and it's just more of the same you've done before. I mean, I've heard of the phrase, if it's not broken, don't fix it, but can you not try for a hint of originality? And I thought critiquing the writing was going to be a no-go, yet somehow, Illumination managed to do it. But moving on, let's talk music. This, I think, was where Illumination made the biggest fingerprint to tell us that this was an Illumination movie, because the soundtrack is littered with pop culture tracks. From a remake of You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch from Tyler the Creator, which is probably to be expected, but also God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, Zat You Santa Claus, My Favorite Things, Run Rudolph Run, A Wonderful Awful Idea, Christmas Is, Deck the Halls, Christmas in Hollis, Jingle Bells, Stealing Christmas, I mean my god, I know they're all Christmas themed, but is there any more we want to cram in there? 13 songs? All of these tracks come together to 37 minutes in total. Now, I imagine the movie's not using the entire runtime of all of these tracks. But if it were, this would be more than a third of the entire film covered up audibly. This movie is exactly 90 minutes long. My god, Illumination sure are pros of skimming right down to the absolute minimum in places. But hey, at least 
I Am The Grinch is an original from Tyler The Creator. That's something. I think a movie chock full of mainstream music is the unmovable stamp of Illumination's presence, but I guess clearly it works. But you have to wonder if part of the reason for this movie's success is through this blatant sellout of music making any given moment feel better than it really deserves. A formula that works so, so well on families for just being blind entertainment. But I don't know. Interestingly, in looking into the production details, I learned a couple of fun trivia facts about the movie. Like how it was in February 2013 that it was first announced that Illumination was developing The Grinch under the working title of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Wow, wonder how you came up to that title. And it was in April of 2016 that Benedict Cumberbatch was brought on board. Originally noted to do his normal accent, because we love it when an actor gets a voice role just to just play themselves. before it was Benedict himself who suggested that the Grinch should be American, because literally all the other Whos were. Yeah, Ben, you take down those British stereotypes of being the accent of the evil English guy. Anyway, most details about the production went on without a hitch. There was a co-director in Peter Candeland who was switched out in 2018 by a producer, but stayed on for the project for additional story direction instead. That direction, of course, being an almost identical narrative to the adaptation we already have. But yeah, other than that, this movie was initially set up for November 10th, 2017, but was delayed to November 9th, 2018 instead. Solidified with a cast of Rashida Jones, Kenan Thompson's Angela Lansbury, and Farrell Williams. Wait, huh? The performer? This guy was set up as the narrator of the whole movie? Why? Does he have a connection with Illumination already? Oh, yeah, he does. He's the golden boy who did the soundtrack for Despicable Me. That makes sense. It's not what you know. It's who. Horton hears a who. What? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Thanks for reaching halfway in this video. If you'd like more, become a member for early access and behind the scenes goodies. Or just a simple subscribe would suffice. But one uninspired casting choice aside, the actual vocal performance from the variety of cast is actually pretty damn good for this movie. I mean, clearly everyone is a professional and they weren't phoning it in for this animation, as everyone does their jobs pretty immaculately. I mean, there's no blood-curdling scream, since there's no excuse for the movie to go in that direction. Although I probably would have enjoyed it as a reaction to one of the Who spotting the big tree had been stolen. Could you imagine? But nonetheless, the dialogue is decent, but when you compare it to all the performances we've seen across every other Grinch adaptation, Jim Carrey still steals the show. I mean, you just can't compete with a perfection as perfect as that. Jim in his prime under 14 hours of prosthetics? The guy literally had to learn how to endure torture to handle the makeup procedure, so the guy probably deserves a break. And when comparing the two directly, actually, I probably wouldn't say it's a no-brainer to a better version. Of course, we have all sorts of nostalgia and adoration for the work of the live-action variant, but I can see how some of the visuals of the Who designs, for example, to rub some people a little the wrong way. And visually, the animation looks so much nicer on the eyes. Plus, a lot more explorative on the actions. But at the same time, narratively, they're the same movie. With a prompt to make a Grinch movie, Illumination set out to do exactly that. And since this is 2018 Illumination, they made sure to cut corners on as much originality as they could. Throwing bread into a toaster is cool and all, and there were plenty of visual gags that couldn't have been achieved otherwise, but on the topic of what was actually added to the source material, it's next to nothing. Unless you count this reindeer that was with them for some time until it wasn't. The candy cane weaponry is fantastic, but it's just a new flavor of the same narrative beat of stealing all the presents, you know? It has the spirit and energy of the Grinch, but as a project that's just a piece of the full picture, it just doesn't bring much new to the table that warrants it being hailed as some golden perfect project. And it's a real shame. It's the same illumination story. The visuals are great, the animation goes in some cool directions, but the writing is just uninspired and lackluster. Settling instead for just what's blandly entertaining and getting oh so many riches off of it. It just adds so little to the story of something with such a legacy as The Grinch. On Rotten Tomatoes, it achieved a 59%, which I think is pretty right. It's entertaining and fun in a bubble, but it's not the next best thing for The Grinch. It's just another Grinch. In a new slick of paint that probably could have done with a little desaturation on the actual gremlin himself, right? It's just another Illumination movie with a fantastic dog-type character that's been copied and pasted from a couple places, and as a fantastic review I saw put it, containing a storytelling ambition that's two sizes too small. I was put off from covering this movie a year ago because I saw reviews were so high, and I could see where they're coming from, but at the end of the day, it's still Illumination doing what they do best, whether we like it or not. Though hey, 2022's been looking pretty good for Illumi, so maybe this is a turning point upwards. 
I guess we'll just have to see this April for the Super Mario movie that I get access to in March. <laughs> Suckers! For now, my name's been Daz. You didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.